So we just finished up talking about the different uh, terminology, the different units that we're going to be using. Uh, we have to be able to work with these. We're going to be talking about objects moving from point A to point B. That means that we're going to be talking about the speeds at which they are moving. We cannot use miles per hour. We're going to have to convert that into feet per second. We can't use kilometers per hour. We've got to convert that into meters per second. Conversely, if I said to you 175 feet per second, it probably wouldn't mean much to you. So maybe it would be handy to be able to convert 175 feet per second into miles per hour, and then you would know what the hell I was talking about. We need to be able to do these conversions back and forth. So here's a little bit more arithmetic for you to learn. Now, if you learn it this way, I'm going to learn you and go step by step without skipping steps the way I'm going to learn you. You should have no problem with this. And also, for any of you who have chemistry in your future, this is a deal breaker for a lot of chemistry students. So learn this one well. So here we are, we're on page 25 in the workbook, conversions. It's based on the principles used in multiplying fractions. Write that in there. Multiplying fractions and exploits the rules used in cross-canceling. You may recall that from grade school. So here's the first example. We've got three-fourths times one-third. Okay, and you remember this. Abracadabra, cross these out. And presto, your answer becomes one-fourth. The next example is A over C times B over A, and again, cross-cancel the A's, and magically, the answer becomes B over C. And it doesn't really matter what the symbols are. Sometimes it, it's helpful to be a little bit cynical. These are just symbols. That's all they are. Patterns of ink, patterns of graphite, patterns of chalk. So, how about this one? cross out the circles, and the answer is triangle over square. Okay. Now, this isn't on the page, and, and you don't need to write this one down. I'm just going to offer up one other example here. It goes kind of like this. Years ago, I used to uh, coach uh, folks for their SATs, and they use a question bank that gets recycled every two or three years. This was a question that would periodically show up. People would look at that and go, oh my God. Well, it's really not that hard. Look what we can do here. Boom, 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 boom. Now, I left space at the bottom of the page because I want you to understand the rationale. I want you to understand why this works. It's not magic. We're going to use a little algebra. And the word algebra, by the way, is derived from a couple of uh, ancient Ar Arabic words that basically translates to the way of numbers, how numbers work. So we'll start with our original problem, 3 fourths times 1 third. So, how about I re rewrite it this way?
pretty much the same thing. So on top, I got three times one. Why can't I do this? Instead of three times one, I'm going to go one times three over four times three. Okay. Which I can instead rewrite like this. Hmm. How about that? Well, what's three over three? That's what's going on here. So, what I'm saying is that when you do this, that is a shorthand way of saying all of this is taking place. I could say that at the end of the day, I'm going to walk out to the parking lot and take this funny piece of metal and insert it into a slot on the right-hand side of the steering column of my car. I'm going to turn it about 45 degrees until it closes contacts in a relay, which will in turn send electricity down to a solenoid uh, attached to the starter of my car, which will in turn engage the flywheel, and on and on and on. I could go through the next 15 minutes of description of what's going to happen. Or I could just say, I'm going to start my car. That's kind of what's going on here. When you do this, you're saying you're going to start the car. That's what's happening with this cross-canceling. Now, there's one other thing that you need to be aware of. And you heard me say a few minutes ago, you have to be a little bit cynical. In class, when I get to this point, I will often say, okay, somebody show me a three. And somebody will grab a piece of paper and they'll scribble the number three on it. And I'll say, no, no, that, that's just a pattern of ink. I want to see an actual three. And then somebody else will hold up three fingers, and I'll say, well, yeah, that's three fingers, but I want to see the actual damn three. And the point of the matter is, you can't. It's an idea. It's an idea that is conveyed by symbols. Patterns of ink, patterns of chalk, patterns of graphite. That's all it is. Don't make it any fancier than that. Here's an example. Here's a pattern of ink. Here's another pattern of ink. Two completely different patterns of ink, and they mean exactly the same thing. So if I do this, what does that equal? Well, it equals one. How about this? If I say, that pattern of ink tells me, or conveys to me, a specific length. That pattern of ink also conveys to me a specific length, and they happen to be the exact same length. Therefore, since they're the same, what do they equal? One. This is a specific length. That too is a specific length. And they are both the same length. Therefore, this divided by this equals 1. Because they're the same thing. They're diff just different patterns of ink expressing exactly the same idea. So keep that in the back of your mind. So here is how we are going to do these conversions. Page 26. So, page 26, we're going to apply the method of multiplying fractions as a means of converting units, the factor labeling method. So we're going to convert 35 miles per hour into x, feet per second. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to restate 35 miles per hour in fraction form. Oh 
Okay. Now, per. Per means over. Or here in Maine, over. All right? Remember that. Per means over. And let me just caution you. Here's what we don't want to see. Because I see this one often enough. Uh-uh. Because that P means her. So this is one we don't want to see. So we don't want that. Okay. So I've got it stated in fraction form. Step two. I'm going to set up a multiplication problem in fraction form so that the terms I want to change will be cross-canceled. And here's where you have to do this one z's at a time z's. I got two units I want to change. Therefore, I'm going to need two factors. Now, what do I want to change? I want to change miles. How do I cross-cancel mile? I put mile down here. Now they're going to get cross-canceled. I'm going to want to get rid of hours, so I'm going to put hour up here so they will be cross-canceled. Don't mix distance and time. Keep them separate. Right. Step three, I'm going to replace with the terms that I do want. I don't want miles. I want feet. I don't want hours, I want seconds. Do it just this way, one step at a time. <clears throat> step four, I'm going to insert the correct mathematical equivalences. So one mile is the same as 5,280 feet, but I'm going to use scientific notation. So it'll be 5.28 times 10 to the third feet. One hour is 60 minutes times 60 seconds, so 3,600 seconds, or 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds. Now you notice I haven't crunched any numbers yet. This is how you're going to survive physics problems. You front load your problems with as much no-brainer stuff as you can and save your number crunching to last as much as you can. Now, I haven't really crunched any numbers here. I'm just doing setup and I'm just following steps. I'm not rushing it. One step at a time. Okay, now I'm going to cross cancel my terms. So what can I cross cancel? Well, I can cross cancel miles. What else can I cross cancel? Hours. What else? Oh! I can cross cancel 10 to the third and get rid of that. Get rid of everything I can. Look at all that stuff I've gotten rid of, and I haven't crunched any numbers yet. So now I'm going to restate the, with the remaining terms. What have I got left? Well, I got 35 times 5.28 feet over. 3.6 seconds. Okay, now, step seven. I'm going to perform, no, perform normal calculations one operation at a time. One operation at a time. That's critical because uh, a lot of calculators are very touchy that way. So the temptation might be to go 35 times 5.28 and then hit divide 3.6. That may work, it may not work. Do it one at a time, you'll never go wrong. So 35 times 5.28, I got 184.8 feet over 3.6 seconds. Now we'll divide. I got 51.333 feet per second.
Clear as mud. If you do it this way every time, without skipping steps, you'll never go wrong. Okay. Page 27. Page 27 is uh, a lab exercise for you to try. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. But I'm going to press on and show you some other stuff. I'm going to go on to page 28, and I'm going to show you how to cheat at algebra. Okay. The field shorthand method for algebraic equations are otherwise known as the Navier. Yep, they taught me this one in the Navy. All right, so given the idea of 12, 3, and 4, we see that 12 over 3 equals 4, 12 over 4 equals 3, and 3 times 4 equals 12. That's not to insult anybody's intelligence. That's just to come up with something very obvious mathematically so we don't get distracted by the math. Okay. But another way that I can represent those ideas is this way. Okay. So here it is. 12 over 4 is 3. 12 over 3 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. This bottom row is multiplication, and whatever is on the top row is going to be equal to the bottom row multiplied. This is slick. This is going to make algebra a lot easier for you. So, for another example, let's say that we have this. x, y, z. So now we can look at that and we, we can see that x over y equals z, x over z equals y, y times z equals x. And we can expand it. In this next example, So remember, this is all multiplication on the bottom row. Whatever's on the top row is equal to the bottom row all multiplied. So 30 equals 3 times 5 times 6. Two, I'm sorry. Uh, supposed to be a 2. Sorry about that. Yeah, so there's a typo there. So that's supposed to be a 2. No. We're going to start this one over again. We're going to stop. Okay. So we got a typo here. So that's 30, and that's supposed to be 2 times 3 times 5. Sorry about that. So cross those out on the bottom row. We see 3 and 5 and 6. Cross that out. It's supposed to be 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. So 30 equals 2 times 3 times 5. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so now 2, 2 is going to equal 30 over... 
3 times 5, which it does. 3 is going to equal 30 over 2 times 5. And 5 will equal 30 over 2 times 3. Okay. So again, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, when I rewrote it, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I guess I got a fat fingered on the, on the uh, keyboard. So yeah, make sure you cross out that 3 and the 5 and the 6 and replace them with 2 and the 3 and the 5. Okay, so moving on. Let me show you how this would work in a practical sense. So, what I've done here is I've concocted a fictitious physics formula that you may use. And it will go something like this. A, B, over C, D, E <coughs> equals F, G. <coughs> so your task is, is to solve for D. Traditionally, algebraically, you would one of the ways that you could approach it would be to do something like this. We'll multiply both sides by CDE These two will cancel out. And so now we got AB equals in order. C, D, E, F, G. And we want to get D by himself, so we're going to divide both sides by C, E, F, G. C, E, F, G. Cancels, 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 cancels. And so now you get D equals A, B over C, E, F, G. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, they taught you that stuff for a reason. That's how algebra works. But we're going to do the same problem again using this egg. And watch how fast this goes. So we're still on page 29. So... Here's our problem. Okay. Now, as you look at this, isn't this kind of like 12 over 3 equals 4? It's kind of on that idea. You got something over something equals something. So what's on top? I look to see if I got something on top, and there it is, AB. AB is going to go on top over CDE, FG. Now, look what I can do. I'm trying to solve for D. All I got to do is look at it. What is D equal? AB over CEFG. No must, no fuss. Isn't that slick? Now, while we're on this page, uh, find some sp uh, space on the left-hand side of your book. I'm going to show you just a couple other things. <clears throat> All right. So, what if I got something like this? It's not quite so obvious. Okay, I don't have anything on top of anything, so it's not going to be quite as obvious. But, let's say I want to solve for B. Well, what's happening to B? Well, he's being multiplied. So, the multiplication line is on the bottom, A, 
B, C, and all of that equals all of this, D, E, F. What is B equal? B equals D, E, F over A, C. Or, what if I was trying to solve for F? Same thing. What's happening to F? Well, he's being multiplied. So I'm going to put him in the multiplication row. DEF equals ABC. That goes on top. What does F equal? Human nature being what it is, we tend to resist new things, but I would encourage you to learn this. And in so encouraging you, that gets us to page 30. That's where you can try some of these out. All right, now as I said earlier, I was going to go over the conversions that are on page 27. Uh, I would prefer that you hit pause and try them out yourself first. And then hit play. Assuming that you have done that, let's walk them through. The first one, we're going to convert, we'll convert 400 miles per hour into feet per second. 400 miles per one hour. Okay, I've got two things to convert. I need two factors. How do I, I cross-cancel miles? I put miles down here. How do I cross-cancel hours? I put hours up here. And I'm not going to skip steps. I don't want miles. I want feet. I don't want hours. I want seconds. One mile equals 5.28 times 10 to the third feet. One hour equals 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds. Cancel, cancel, cancel. So what have I got left? 400 times 5.28 feet over 3.6 seconds. Rush fans, you'll enjoy that. Now I'll go ahead and divide. I got convert 80 meters per second into miles per hour. 80 meters per one second. I got two things I want to convert, meters and seconds. I need two factors. Cross cancel meters like that. Cross cancel seconds like that. I don't want meters, I want miles. I don't want seconds, I want hours. <clears throat> 1.61 times 10 to the third meters makes one mile. 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds makes one hour. Cancel. So 
now I have 80 times 3.6 miles over 1.61 hours. Two hundred eighty eight even. Over one point six one hours. I got one seventy eight point eight eight two. Next one. <clears throat> 220 feet per second. I'm going to convert that into miles per hour. Two things I want to change, therefore two factors. Okay. Feet. Seconds. Miles. Hours. One mile. Five point two eight times ten to the third feet. 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds makes one hour. Cancel. Cancel. Fifty miles per hour even. Okay, now I'm going to pause and point something out here. Um, for practice, this is a beautiful this is a beautiful example right here that you can practice at home. So, if for instance you wanted to change this, let's say that instead of 220 feet per second, you doubled it. You made it 440 feet per second. Well, then it should come out to 300 miles per hour. So go ahead and try that and see if it does. Or you can do it backwards. You can cut this in half, for instance. You can make that 75 miles per hour. Well, then that should come out to 110 feet per second. So it's a beautiful way for you to practice. The other thing is, this skill, this particular skill set, is one that you're going to need throughout the course, right up to and including the final exam. So this is something that you really need to get down. This conversion process. Okay, last one. Eighty-eight kilometers per hour. We're going to turn that into meters per second. Two factors. 
kilometers to cancel, hours to cancel. I don't want kilometers, I want meters. I don't want hours, I want seconds. 10 to the third meters makes one kilometer. 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds makes one hour. Okay, now again, the whole idea behind this factor labeling is that one hour is the same as 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds. Therefore, what do these equal? One. Okay, that's how we're cheating our way through this. All right, so now we'll do some cancellation. Kilometers, kilometers, hours, hours, 10 to the third, 10 to the third, one, one. Okay. And we're left with... kilometers over 3.6, I'm sorry, 80 meters. Let me get ahead of myself here. 88 meters over 3.6 seconds. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. You need to know how to do this. This is going to be throughout the course, up to and including the final exam. And don't be surprised if half of the questions on the final exam will require you to do some type of a conversion. So you've got to get this one down. All right. Now, I will ask you to hit pause and take a crack at uh, the uh, self-check examples on page 30. I want you to try those out. And presuming that you have hit pause, we'll go through those. <clears throat> so our first, our first one is force equals mass times acceleration. That's the second most famous equation in physics. It comes from Sir Isaac. And we want to solve for m. All right, so force, mass, acceleration being multiplied here. Okay, so what is m equal? Force over mass. Oh, force over acceleration, rather. The next one, power equals work over time. So, you see anything on top? Yeah, work. Work over time equals power. Therefore, time equals work over time. Here's an equation you're going to see a lot of. 2AS equals VF squared minus VI squared. We're going to solve for A. So the way we're going to get around that, A is being multiplied, so we know that he's going to be on the bottom row. So we'll put all this on the top. A equal equals VF squared minus VI squared over 2S. Kinetic energy equals one half MV squared. Okay, so here's the street fighting physics part of this. We know that if you are working through this problem using a calculator, what would you do with that one half? Well, you'd automatically turn that into a 0.5. Okay, so that's how we're going to rewrite it. All right, 
and we're trying to figure out m. So, m is being multiplied. We've got to unmultiply him somehow, so we're going to put him down here in the multiplication row. Kinetic energy goes on top. m equals kinetic energy over 0.5 v squared. Now that's kind of improper arithmetic in kind of the same way that the word ain't is improper English, but it works. Okay, next one. Here's the first physics you ever learned back in grade school. Distance equals rate times time. And we're trying to figure out time. So, rate times time equals distance. Therefore, time equals distance over rate. Believe it or don't, that one throws a lot of folks. Okay, the next one, potential energy. Potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. And we're going to try to figure out height. So height's being multiplied. Okay, so H equals potential energy over mass times gravity. Here's a little bit of trig, and if you haven't done trig yet, don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that, and I'll teach you. Okay, so A equals cosine theta times hypotenuse. Okay, and we're going to try to figure out hypotenuse. So, that's being multiplied, so... Cosine theta, hypotenuse, A, what is H equal? It equals A over the cosine of theta. There we go. And finally, A equals VF minus VI over T. I'm going to solve for T. So, this on top of this, so VF minus VI on top over T equals A, therefore T equals VF minus VI over A. So yeah, take some time and learn how to do this. For those of you who are in architectural engineering and design, um, I'd like to have a nickel for every time uh, the uh, AED students have come up to me after this class and said, that has saved my ass in architectural engineering design course. So especially you guys, learn this one. You'll be thankful if you do. So that concludes that part. So um, that's going to keep you busy for a little bit. And the next topic that we will pick up on uh, will be uh, the structure of an atom. We're going to get into some real physics, physics, physics. Get into atoms and electrons and protons and neutrons and gluons and bosons and fermions and all of that good stuff. Okay, so next time.